Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionellos one more time continuing our great discussion of the glorious playlist called Biochemistry. In the previous video, we have talked about Wernicke's aphasia. Today, we'll talk about Korsakoff syndrome, also known as Korsakoff psychosis. If you combine Wernicke's aphasia from the previous video with Korsakoff syndrome from this video, you get something called Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome. This is a clinical triad and we will talk about this later. Today, let's glorify the great scientist Sergei Sergeyevich Korsakov, and let's get started. Don't forget that this is a playlist and these videos are intended to be watched in order for maximum retention and understanding. The previous video was Wernicke's encephalopathy. The problem was in the Wernicke's area, also known as Brodmann area 22. Damage to the Wernicke's areas, you develop receptive aphasia. Great news, my glorious course on antibiotics is coming in less than two weeks. It will take you from a novice and make you a professional when it comes to antibiotics. I'm serious. Is it easy? No, it's not. Nothing is easy. But is it doable? Yes, and you came to the right place. It's gonna be available on medicosisperfectionalis.com, so please mark your calendar for two weeks. And if you would like to get 90% discount on this course, you can buy my electrolytes course. And once you get it, you will enter my list. You'll be on my glorious list. And now when the antibiotics course is released, you will receive an email from me with your 90% discount code. So please go to medicosisperfectionist.com. By the way, this first code, which was 75% of the electrolytes is gone. 60% is still there. I think only 16 spots left. This course deals with all of the electrolyte imbalances, all of the ECG abnormalities that happen with hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hypercalcemia, etc. And uh, with the normal kidney physiology. Now let's get started. Sergei Sergevich Korsakov was born in Great Russia and he is the one who discovered Korsakov syndrome. He is the first neuropsychiatrist in Great Russia. This is the 19th century. Sergei Korsakov had an open mind and was willing to learn from other people. So he traveled to many countries to learn from others. And as Toyota says, let's go places. This video is not sponsored by Toyota, although I wish it were. Korsakov went to Vienna and learned from Theodore Maynard. Theodore Maynard is the one who discovered the basal nucleus of Maynard, which is responsible for acetylcholine or associated with acetylcholine, and you damage this in Alzheimer's dementia. That's why patients with Alzheimer's have low level of acetylcholine in their brain. Theodore Maynard is the one who discovered Maynard cells and Maynard decussation as well. A decussation is a crossing, such as the motor decussation, the sensory decussation, etc. I think I should make a playlist about neuroanatomy. It's gonna be epic. One day it's gonna happen. Then Korsakov went to Germany and became a student for Carl Friedrich Westphal. This is the person who discovered the Westphal nucleus of the oculomotor nerve, which is cranial nerve number three. He is the one that coined the term agoraphobia, Wilson disease, before Wilson discovered it, or Wilson actually took all the credit for Wilson disease. Wilson disease, also known as hepatolenticular degeneration. What a great name. Herb Westphal symptom. Edinger Westphal nucleus, narcolepsy, and cataplexy. He is the one who termed all of these terms. Carl Friedrich Westphal had many students, including Arnold Pick, who discovered Pick's disease or frontotemporal degeneration. Carl Wernicke, who discovered Wernicke's area and Wernicke's aphasia that we have discussed in the previous video. And last but not least, the great surgery, Sergevich Korsakov. Which brings us to my words of wisdom. If you learn from giants, you might become a giant. But if you learn from Twitter, hehe, <laughs> Jack Dorsey, I'm sorry. Let's move on. The only secret in life is hard work. You do not need to read the 10 secrets in life or the 20 recipes for success. Shut up. Speaking of hard work, now, let me tell you a story about one of my favorite women ever, Mrs. B, also known as Rose Blumkin. She was born in Russia, 
One day she waked up early at 6 a.m. and saw her mother baking her bread before dawn. She said to her mom, my dear, I will help you. I will get a job, save some money and go to America. I will work hard and send you money. So she left Russia on a peanut boat. Apparently she was not allergic. Haha. <laughs> she landed in Seattle. She could not speak a word of English. In fact, she was illiterate. The American Red Cross saw a tag around her neck and on it was written Fort Dodge, Iowa. So they took her to Iowa. She did not know anybody. Her daughter, Frances, went to school. And when she came back every evening, Mrs. B asked Frances to teach her English and the English words that she studied this day. That's how she learned English. Then Mrs. B did something that will never trend on Twitter. She worked a lot. She saved $500 and then bought some carpet for $2,000. And now she owes $1,500. So she sold her own bed, her own sofa and refrigerator to pay back the loan. And one by one, she started selling carpet. And then her basement grew from two carpets and a sofa in her basement to the biggest furniture store in the world, the Nebraska Furniture Mart. She then sold the company for $60 million to Warren freaking Buffett. She continued to manage the store until she was 103 years old. She died when she was 104. She could never read or write. Her children and grandchildren still work at the store today. She changed her life and her entire family tree, employed hundreds of workers and helped millions of customers. She is a living example of what can happen to you when you have a dream and stick to that dream and sacrifice everything till you achieve it. She was a winner, not a whiner, a victor, not a victim. Her store is still in Omaha today. And I hope I can visit it before I die and maybe I will buy a carpet from her. Thomas Edison had only three months of schooling during his entire freaking life. He did not lack education, neither did he die poor. I never let schooling interfere with my education. Oh, but I go to college and I listen to my professor with his PowerPoint. This is schooling. This is not education. Education came from a Latin word called educo, which means to induce from within. Show me a store clerk with goals and I will show you a man who will make history. But show me a man with no goals and I will show you a store clerk, said the great J.C. Penney, who started as a store clerk. Korsakov is the one who coined the term paranoia, spoke a lot about alcoholic psychosis and alcoholic polyneuropathy, and of course is the one who discovered Korsakov syndrome. Wernicke's encephalopathy plus Korsakov syndrome equals Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome or WKS. What is Wernicke's encephalopathy? It's a defect in area 22. We call Wernicke's encephalopathy, Wernicke's aphasia, or sensory aphasia, or fluent aphasia because you can still talk, receptive aphasia because the problem is in the perception, is in the sensory part of talking. In other words, you cannot understand. We also call it posterior aphasia because it's posterior to this imaginary midline, and that's why it's sensory, not motor. Then, Korsakoff syndrome is our topic today. This is a thiamine or vitamin B1 deficiency, which will lead to amnesia, which means memory loss. By the way, what is the difference between amnesia and dementia? Please let me know the answer in the comment section. And then wernicke korsakoff syndrome is a clinical triad, and we will discuss that in a later video. Korsakoff syndrome could be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. It has two subtypes. So just because you have Korsakoff syndrome doesn't necessarily mean that you are an alcoholic. It could be simply because of vitamin B1 deficiency. But by the way, if you drink too much alcohol, people who drink too much alcohol usually do not eat. So you will get deficiency of vitamin B1. When you get deficiency of vitamin B1, you get Korsakoff syndrome. If it's the non-alcoholic, you are not eating or you're eating food deficient in thiamine. 
you will get a vitamin B1 deficiency and develop Korsakoff syndrome. Korsakoff syndrome is nothing but vitamin B1 deficiency causing amnesia. How? What's the mechanism? We'll talk about this in the next slide. We have seven major symptoms. Anterograde amnesia, retrograde amnesia, amnesia of fixation, and when you have amnesia, you usually start confabulating, which means you make up stuff to fill in the gaps in your knowledge. You get apathy, lack of insight, and minimal content in conversation. You just keep it short and get to the point. Not in a good way, but in a pathological way. What is thiamine? We have talked about this before in this playlist of biochemistry. Thiamine is vitamin B1. We have two compounds, thiamine diphosphate and monophosphate. We could not care less about monophosphate. Diphosphate is the same as thiamine pyrophosphate or THDP, also known as TPP, thiamine pyrophosphate. It's a cofactor in biochemical reaction, including most of the enzymes that end in dehydrogenase. What is dehydrogenase? Please watch my previous video. One of them is the pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is an amazing enzyme, but it needs thiamine as a cofactor, as a helper, as a co-pilot. Speaking of pyruvate dehydrogenase, it's here. It needs vitamin B1 as a cofactor. Pyruvate dehydrogenase will convert pyruvate, which came from glycolysis, into acyl-CoA. Acyl-CoA will enter Krebs cycle, giving us ATP, which is the currency of energy in the cell. ATP is money. In other words, to go from pyruvate to energy, you need vitamin B1, period, end of issue. Without vitamin B1, your pyruvate will become lactate, leading to lactic acidosis, which will lead to a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Any high anion gap metabolic acidosis, or any metabolic acidosis for that matter, inhibits your synaptic transmission, your synapses. So you get drowsy, lethargic, tired, and even comatose. Do you want to know why? Because normally metabolism secretes acids. So if I let you metabolize, you will secrete acids. But if you have acidosis, your body doesn't want you to metabolize. So your body doesn't want you to move. So it inhibits your synapses and makes you tired and lethargic because if you move, you'll get more metabolism, which will worsen your acidosis. Something your professor will never tell you. So, from pyruvate to energy, we need vitamin B1 or thiamine as a cofactor. One of the organs that needs vitamin B1 the most is the great mammillary body. Mammillary body is responsible for memory. Without it, you get amnesia. So, any damage to your mammillary body will lead to amnesia. So, vitamin B1 deficiency will lead to amnesia because now you have no memory. Why does the mammillary body need vitamin B1? Because the mammillary body needs ATP. Remembering thing like requires energy. There is no free lunch. Korsakoff syndrome, you have thiamine or vitamin B1 deficiency into no conversion of pyruvate to acyl-CoA, therefore no ATP in the mammillary body. You get gliosis, hemorrhage, and bleeding in the mammillary body, which will lead to amnesia. Now pyruvate will become lactate, which will lead to gliosis, hemorrhage, and bleeding in the mammillary body, which will lead to amnesia. There is damage to the mammillary body, medial dorsal nucleus, anterior group of thalamic nucleus, which is part of the limbic system, all of these come in multiple choice questions on your exam all the time. Please remember, mammillary body, medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus, anterior group of the thalamus, which is part of the limbic system. Major symptoms are seven, three amnesias, anterior grade, retrograde, and amnesia of fixation, confabulation, apathy, lack of insight, minimal content. Thank you so much. What causes thiamine deficiency? Also seven, chronic alcoholism. Severe malnutrition, those two usually come together. Dietary deficiency, if you only eat the refined white rice or white bread, that's not fortified. And I've talked about fortification in the previous video. I, most of the time, like personally, I eat white bread, but it's fortified. So don't worry, I'll be fine. How do I know that it's fortified? Read the label, honey. Read the freaking label and check the laws of your country. 
Next, prolonged vomiting, which can happen in cholera, hyperemesis gravidarum, and chemotherapy. Mercury poisoning, which will lead to numbness, weakness, renal toxicity. The renal toxicity could be acute tubular necrosis, which is the toxic subtype, or RTA type 2, which is the proximal subtype. Because, as you know, mercury will damage your proximal convoluted tibial, leading to Fanconi syndrome, not to be confused with Fanconi anemia, and Fanconi syndrome is a renal tubular acidosis type 2 because it involves the proximal convoluted tibial. Extreme dieting, those of you who follow online bloggers. Folate deficiency leading to thiamine deficiency, I'm sorry, leading to decrease thiamine absorption in the GI tract. So here is a vitamin deficiency leading to another vitamin deficiency. Horrible. Remember, I've told you before that vitamins are essential, which means you have to eat them in the diet because your body cannot synthesize them. How to diagnose Korsakoff syndrome clinically, lab or imaging are not needed. If you do PET scan, which is not needed, you'll find decreased glucose metabolism. Where? Same three locations, in the mammillary bodies, in the medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus, and in the anterior group of the nuclei of the thalamus. Cool. If you do an autopsy for forensic pathology or after the patient passes away, if you just want to research it more, you'll find the lesions or infarctions in the same three locations, mammillary bodies, medial dorsal nucleus, and anterior nucleus. How do you treat Korsakoff syndrome? Give the patient what they lost. If they lost vitamin B1, um, give them vitamin B1. Genius. This is dead gum insightful. Or also hydration and nutrition, of course, which goes without saying. If there is an acute mental status change, this is an emergency, and an emergency, remember your ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. And here is a quick song from Dr. Conrad Fisher. For any acute mental status change of unknown etiology, Narcan, dextrose, thiamine for you and me. Why Narcan? Because the patient could have been poisoned by morphine. The, the whole point of acute mental sessions of unknown etiology that we do not know the cause. We do not know what caused this person to have an acute mental status change. So you give Narcan because he might be on heroin. You give dextrose and thiamine because he might be on alcohol and he might be suffering from Korsakoff syndrome. By the way, if you give glucose without vitamin B1 to a patient who is an alcoholic, you might kill him. Always give dextrose with thiamine. Why? We'll talk about that later. But remember that good intentions are never good enough. In a nutshell, here is a very quick summary about Korsakoff syndrome. The cause, thiamine or B1 deficiency, which has seven causes. We have chronic alcoholism, malnutrition, dietary deficiency, prolonged vomiting, mercury poisoning, severe dieting, folate deficiency when you do not eat those green leafy vegetables. The problem could be in one of those three sites in your brain, and the symptoms are also seven, three amnesias, confabulation, and other three. Remember your mammillary bodies, please. Diagnose it clinically, treat with IV thiamine, and for any acute mental status change of unknown etiology, Narcan, dextrose, thiamine, for you and me. Thank you so much for watching. Please get my antibiotics course, and please go to medicosperfectionals.com and get my electrolytes course before I release my antibiotics course so that you can receive a 90% discount on your antibiotics course. Thank you so much for watching. I am honored. I love you. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.